Good morning. It's a lovely day, lots of sunshine and blue skies, also very blustery. I'm going to start heading back the way I came now, all the way back up to Fradley. I won't film it in anything like the detail of the trip down because we have, after all, just done it. But if there are any highlights, I will, um, I'll make sure I include those. So really, this is not a vlog, but it's not a not a vlog either. It's just a handful of clips, mostly from the bow camera, of things I spotted as I went along. This, for example, is the start of the Shropshire Union Canal at Authorley Junction as I set off. And then back through the very narrow bit as fast as I could, and luckily again no boats coming the other way. For people asking why wasn't it made wider, it was dug in the 1770s by hand through solid rock, so only as wide as was needed. As soon as I emerged I realised I'd been trailed by a load of kayaks. I hadn't even noticed them as I was concentrating on steering, but even if I had I wouldn't have pulled over in the narrows to let them pass. It made more sense to just hang on till we were all through, I think. You recall how overgrown the towpaths were when I set out. It's remarkable what a bit of lockdown easing can do. See how this one's all cut short again? The CRT had been out with their strimmers. And lo and behold, when I paused to refill the water tank above Gailey Lock, what did I capture on film? It's a rather damp bloke with the strimmer cutting back the vegetation. Also here at Gailey is the Roundhouse, a listed building and former lock keeper's cottage from the 18th century. Now it's a gift shop. I hadn't filmed it on the way down due to rain, and it wasn't much better on the way back. So I moored below Gailey and spent the afternoon having a lovely snooze. It's one of my favourite hobbies. This will be how I end my days, you know. Speaking of rain, I'm often asked if the canals flood, and although they can, by and large they don't, because at each lock there's an overflow channel so that excess water from a rising pound will go down to the next one and from there to the next, and so on, until all the water gets to the lowest level. Quite what happens then, I've no idea, but it's probably run off to a river or such like. And generally, I'd say it's overflowing rivers that cause canals to flood, rather than canals flooding themselves. Something else I'm often asked about is whether you can carry land transport on the back of a narrowboat. I've seen motorbikes, but here someone's put their electric disability scooter over the stern. It was mid-July, and with lockdown having been eased for all boaters, including holidaymakers and those not living aboard, the canals had begun to get busier, with lots of craft coming the other way. This is fine, of course. It was simply very noticeable that there were lots of folk about enjoying the water, and that's the theme for the rest of this cruise. Here's another one coming, which I noticed just in time to let them through as I moved to the right to give space. And then another on this quite wide but very sharp corner just before a little aqueduct. How would you like to see a very near miss by me coming up to this lock? Yes, I thought you would. The green boat ahead was on the lock landing, waiting for the blue boat to finish coming out before they went in. Of course, I went to stop just behind them, lining myself up in the queue like a responsible boater. I confess, I slightly misjudged it, believing that I'd stop just behind the green boat, but only in fact avoided them because they set off at exactly that moment and I'm not convinced my front fender didn't give their rear one a little kiss either. I did apologise once they were settled in the lock, but this was definitely a facepalm on my account. And then more busyness as I came back towards Tixall, with boat after boat coming the other way. 
that lock was in for a non-stop afternoon. I didn't stop at Tixall as I was making good progress and had decided I wanted to get around the corner at Great Haywood and down below the locks there past Shugborough. Here is Great Haywood Junction and you can see a boat passing ahead along the Trent and Mersey Canal. I'd slowed as I'd seen it and knew they'd also know I was there from blasting the horn, so after they went past I carried on out. But it was so busy that as I emerged I discovered I was coming out between two boats in series. Luckily, if the second one had been closer, there was enough width for them to avoid me and they'd have tooted their horn as well, no doubt. But they didn't, so all was well. It's always a pleasure to accidentally time your arrival at a lock just as someone's coming out, so it's all set ready for you. That is the upside of busy canals. This is more likely to happen. Just as the downside is a greater likelihood also of waiting in queues for the locks. Remember that tree across the canal that I had to squeeze past on the way up? That's it on the left, cut back at least to some degree, although they could have gone a bit further with the shears, I reckon. Now then, about all these oncoming boats. Here I was in Rugeley at the popular mooring spot near the supermarkets. It's quite narrow, so when another boat comes around the corner, there's a bit of a gentle squeeze in over to the greenery on the right. Honestly, at times, narrow boating is like trying to line up a shuttle with the International Space Station. At that point, they spotted the boat right behind me. No sooner had I gone past the greenery than another boat came into view as well. This was starting to feel ridiculous, as if someone was lining up boats just around the corner to fire at me. I waited, of course, not much else you can do. Narrow boating is, after all, about slowing down. Unfortunately, I then discovered how shallow it is over on the right and promptly felt the bow sliding up onto the silt. I couldn't go forward, it would just ground me even more, so I needed to reverse off it, which caused some bemusement to that boat that was right behind me. I had to shout what I was doing to them. Luckily the boat became free quite easily and I carried on around the corner to the blind bend under the bridge whereupon, you guessed it, more boats appeared and that first boat shouted to say there was another one behind so I had due warning. Another one coming through, another one coming through. Luckily with plenty of space for me to hold station until they'd come through. Further on and a classic spaghetti western standoff took place as me and another boater suddenly spotted each other through this pair of bridges going round a corner. I flung my boat into reverse to bring it to a halt and it appeared so did he. We then each became terribly British about waiting for the other one to go through first. He stopped and I stopped, 
and each of us waved frantically for the other to continue. You go first. No, you go first. <laughs> I insist, you go first. No, no, not at all. You go first. Please, carry on. No, you. No, you. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. Well, I couldn't see much of a space either side of him for me to go into if I had gone under the bridge, so I stuck to my guns and reversed like crazy to make it clear that he should come through. You could say we should use standard maritime horn signals to indicate our intentions, but few people use them or even know what they mean on the canal, so it would likely have just been extra noise for no benefit. Ultimately, he saw I was going backwards and took the initiative to push on through. Phew! Perhaps the best illustration of just how busy the canals were by this point is a single image of every boat that went past me in the space of just four hours on my final day's cruising. That's roughly one every 12 minutes, and that is busy. Oh, and because it was such a lovely sunny Sunday, let's not forget all the kayakers, paddleboarders and dinghy rowers who are having a smashing, splashing time on the water too. Eventually I made it back to Fradley Junction, but to keep the cliffhanger running, which way was I going to turn? Back down the Coventry or continue east along the Trenton Mersey? Find out in a later episode. Cheerio!